Hey guys, it's Laura here. Um, it's been a couple weeks since my last video. It's been, like I said before, really tough to find time to actually film and um, have quiet at home. But I'm actually at work today. I have a clinic and uh, a lot of my patients sit in shop. <laughs> so I'm basically waiting for a page from the medical assistant if, if any patients do show up. I thought it might be good to do a video on my sort of pre-med journey. I guess for starters, I'll say, um, that I basically came from an area, if any of you guys are familiar with Springfield, you know, it's not a great place to grow up in. Um, it's an inner city type place, very large underserved minority population, my family being a part of that population. Um, and high crime rates, you know, high dropout rates, etc, etc. So, not the best place to grow up, but for me it was something, a place that was very formative for me. Um, my mom was a nurse, my dad also worked um, in healthcare, so they were like amazing. I came from an amazing, hardworking family, but they definitely didn't have much to begin with. And I was exposed to really death and, and illness at a pretty young age. My, my grandparents had diabetes and heart disease and uh, lots of cancer in my family, so lots of illness. Um, and on top of that, I, I also saw lots of sort of not so natural um, death, so uh, family members that I lost due to gang violence, family members that I lost due to domestic violence, um, family members that I lost due to drug abuse, so a lot of loss, um, and a lot of death, and a lot of being constantly reminded that none of us are promised any time here. So anyway, I'll make a long story short, I just, I always appreciated life and I always looked up to those who fought so hard to to preserve it or to at least improve it, which is so much of what doctors do, you know, not just decreasing mortality but also decreasing morbidity. So that was a bit of my background, but still coming from that type of place um, during those years that you really give into peer pressure, like freshman year of high school, um, I got into a lot of trouble, a lot of, a lot of trouble. Um, and I almost failed my freshman year because I was skipping classes, not doing homework, you know, doing the cool thing, which was to not make an effort. But thankfully, I like to say science was my savior. Um, and I had a biology class, and most importantly, I had a biology teacher. Even though I wasn't doing the homework and sometimes was still skipping classes, that class was actually the one I was least likely to skip. <laughs> and because it was very visual, we were doing a lot of histology and you know, cell cycle diagrams. You know, there's so many diagrams in biology um, that although I wasn't actively studying, I'm a very visual learner, and a lot of that just sort of stuck with me. So when it came down to, you know, taking tests, I was actually still doing relatively well for the lack of effort <laughs> on my part. And my teacher saw that, Mr. Voltz saw that, and um, Mr. Voltz, if there's ever a chance that you're watching this video, I really hope it makes its way to you because I still attribute everything to you. Um, really, he, he pulled me aside all the time and would just sort of say, Laura, what are you doing? You are totally screwing up. You have so much potential, you know. The kids that you're, that you're screwing around with, they, they're not thinking about their futures and they're certainly not thinking about your future. You can do more do better. You know, he always expected more of me and that, despite my parents telling me similar things, right? Like, you don't listen to your parents at that age. You need someone else other than your parents. You know, somebody else who you don't feel like is obligated to love you or to care about you. To care. And, uh, and that's what I had in him. Because of that, I somehow, you know, it got to me. And I sort of flipped my whole act around and I started taking school really seriously and, and really put my mind to it. and busted my ass in high school, so although there was never a chance for me to be valedictorian or salutatorian or anywhere even near that because of my freshman year GPA, um, I still had a huge um, upswing, I guess you could say, in my GPA and, and what happened in school. I didn't do a ton of extracurriculars in high school, and it's mostly because I, I was uh, responsible for taking care of my little sister um, after school, so you know I didn't really have time to participate in any sort of outside of school extracurriculars, um, which turned out to be okay. When it came down to applying to colleges, um, I honestly don't remember my SAT score, but I want to say it was like, it was decent. 
wasn't like stellar. We didn't have like SAT prep courses or any of that stuff. But my guidance counselor, who was a really sweet lady, and I'm sure a very well-intentioned lady, um, super, super nice, was not optimistic whatsoever about my chances for college. You know, she was really pushing our local community college and our state's university. I sort of listened to her. I, I still applied to, you know, my reach schools were like Boston College and Smith and Wellesley. When I actually got admissions, I got admitted to every single school I applied to with scholarships. I was sort of pissed at my guidance counselor. Like, you know, I, I could have reached a little higher, but looking back now, I actually don't regret any of it. I'm so glad that I applied to Smith. I'm so glad I decided to go to Smith, which was honestly largely due to financial reasons. They gave me a full tuition scholarship. Um, and I sort of, knowing my, my family's financial situation and um, still wanting to be relatively close to home, that's where I decided to go. Once I got to Smith, um, they had a program called the AIMS program, which is Achieving Excellence in Mathematics, Engineering, and the Sciences. Um, and it essentially pairs, you know, young minority women who are just coming into the college with a mentor who's doing research. And it basically gets you into their research lab and, and pays you to be in their research lab. So it's like a work-study position um, and really just allows for a, a great mentorship relationship, great mentoring relationship. Um, so I got lucky enough, you know, to... Uh, have a mentor and you get to pick and I picked one that was like the most medicine-y sounding um, and it was a neuroscience lab and my mentor Adam was was like the greatest thing that happened to me all throughout undergrad because I, I joined that lab and I was really I mean obviously you start from the bottom and you work your way up but I really he gave me the opportunity to show him that I could work my way up, right? Like we're not always given that chance to, to show what you can really do and, and thankfully he gave me that opportunity and so, you know, throughout that time working in his lab, all throughout undergrad, I was able to, you know, by the end I was training everybody, developing my own experiments, uh, publishing papers, presenting my research at huge national conferences, I traveled to Chicago and DC um, to present my research, so it was just like, an amazing, amazing opportunity that I don't know how I would have gotten at other places at larger universities. You know, it was really because there weren't any graduate students or any like, you know, anybody else really. As a freshman, I was able to start, and by the time I was a junior, I was really running the lab, which was just incredible. And when it came down to applying to medical schools, that was actually one of my biggest extracurricul extracurriculars that I was able to talk about. I was a neuroscience major, and uh, my minor was in the history of science and technology. I, I, history has always been just a huge passion of mine. I've always loved history. I've always found it so incredibly interesting um, just to know know what happened in the past. Like There's so much that we should remember from that. There's, you know, we, we really need to know that everything that we're accomplishing is like standing on the shoulders of giants, right? Like everything that we do now, it's because someone took a step and, and got us in this direction and we're just continuing on that path. So anyway, I, I just love history. Um, I guess a little known fact about me is that one of my one of my first tattoos is uh, down my roots and it's actually the first written reference to the word brain ever. Um, it's uh, from the Edwin Smith Surgical Papyrus and it's it's basically just this hieroglyphic of the word brain. Which is so cool to me. I mean, even though now I'm not doing anything re related to the brain still cool, it's still my favorite tattoo. My dad always likes to joke, what are you gonna do if you find an earlier, you know, papyrus or an earlier reference? I'm kind of, that's what I got the other side for. One summer I had applied for a research position through Harvard and it was, and I'm gonna forget the name of it now, but it's their big, you know, research program for, um, for minority students at, at Harvard Med School. And I was so pumped about it, I'm like already planning my summer in Boston. And I got rejected from that, um, and that was that like that stung. <laughs> but it was it was one of those things, and I really wanted to mention it because even though I didn't do it as an extracurricular, it was one of those things that just motivated me to work harder. And and you know it makes you question all your accomplishments and question how worthy you are. But it shouldn't um, it 
shouldn't knock you down, right? Like, you really need to become one of those people. If you want to be successful, you really need to become one of those people who doesn't get, you know, who doesn't let failures and, and rejection slow them down. Like, yes, it stings, it hurts. Take that. And take that sting and let it motivate you. Like, let it light a match up your ass. And really just make you work harder. Like, use that burn. <laughs> so that's that's what I did. I worked my ass off. And, and I didn't let it sway me from once I decided to apply to medical schools, applying to Harvard. Even though they had already rejected me for, from something else, you know. So I just wanted to throw that in there. I think it's really important. I get a lot of questions about dealing with failure, and I've had so many instances where I've failed, and so many instances where I've been rejected, or things didn't work out the way I wanted them to, or the way I expected them to, and you just make it work. Like, you you still continue on that path towards your goal. You might have to readjust a few things. Hopefully you're working harder, but you just, like, keep going. Let it motivate you. Okay, enough, <laughs> enough of that. Um, Another thing I'll say is that, once again, uh, the head of our pre-med advising committee, again, another really nice, sweet lady, but she didn't seem to be the biggest fan of me, and again, wasn't very optimistic about where I should go for medical school and, and what my application looked like. And this time I knew, this time, you know, you sort of just learn thanks to my experience with my high school guidance counselor. Yeah, you, you shake your head, yes, yes, okay, you listen to their advice, but it's advice, like, do what you want, and that's what I did. So I still applied to all the schools that she said, you know, I might just be basically wasting my money on the application. And I got in, I didn't get in everywhere, but I got into a lot of really important schools, including HMS. It works out, you know, like things work out the way they're supposed to. Yeah, I guess my journey from Harvard until here, we'll say for another video, but I just really wanted to uh, to share that story and I don't know, I hope it gives you a little bit more about my background, I hope it um, maybe can resonate with a few of you who may be in similar circumstances, whether in high school or in college, um, know that you don't need to come from a place where everything is laid out for you already and you don't need to come from a huge name undergrad to to still end up being someplace really amazing. You can do it! I hope you guys enjoyed this video and as always feel free to leave comments below and, and um, yeah, have a great week. And I, I guess I'll go check in on clinic and see. Still no patients. I guess it's snowing. <laughs> like not that cold outside. It's pretty cold. It's like 19 degrees. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go pump now.